Hello and welcome to another Beast PC video. Computer hardware is ever changing. New CPUs, GPUs, motherboards, even RAM and power supplies come out seemingly every month. Speeds are getting faster and faster and the benchmark scores are getting better and better. Well today, let's take a break from the cutting edge and look back on the trends. What are some of the most classic, influential parts released in the modern age? We answer that question with two of the most important parts of the last decade. And they're these, an Intel Core i5-2500K and an NVIDIA GTX 750Ti. What makes them special? Well, the i5 was released in 2011 and has aged masterfully into 2020. Upon release, it brought with it arguably Intel's last big performance jump. It's an insane overclocker. It supports modern games. Its IPC is quite good. And it's cheap. After watching 9 years of CPU development run by, this shining star is still very much relevant. The 750Ti, as far as GPUs go, is one of the most popular and easiest to recommend for everybody. It's extraordinarily versatile, being small and power efficient without need for auxiliary PCIe connectors, yet it's still fast enough to play games. It introduced the trend of sticking low power cards in business systems to turn them into gaming PCs. It's also cheap and easily accessible. These two have probably been featured in many systems together throughout the years, and today we see if such a system is still relevant. The test system is an ASUS P8Z77 motherboard, which we've done some repairs to. Note the yellow and black wires are not original, however it is functioning just fine. Noctua NHD15S cooler, 16GB of DDR3-1600 RAM, and all games are on SSD storage. With the decent motherboard and powerful cooler, we managed to overclock the CPU to 5.0GHz with relative ease at 1.45V. A little bit on the high side, but still perfectly safe for this 32 nanometer CPU. Not overclocking this chip is seriously leaving performance on the table. This chip was born to be overclocked. In Cinebench R15, the CPU ran around 675 points multi core and 175 points single core, which is still nothing to sneeze at. Cinebench R20 gave 1453. On the GPU, games ran great as well. Starting with the classic GTA 5, the system was able to push 91 FPS average very consistently, although the CPU did show signs of struggling. When tasked with intense physics, the CPU really suffered and the frame rate did as well, tanking down 30% to the high 50s. The Vulkan API is supported, so we tested Doom and it ran at just below 60 FPS, but still perfectly playable. Turning the resolution down would definitely propel it above 60. Fortnite ran great, with 100% resolution scaling at 1080p, it managed to run at 105 FPS average, although when jumping out of the bus and landing at the beginning it could be a little bit stuttery. Far Cry 5 taxes the CPU a little bit more, and while our MSI Afterburner overlay turned off, the average at the end of the benchmark was 36 FPS, still decent enough. Turning it down to 720p might yield a better result. Shadow of the Tomb Raider is more optimized for CPU cores and is also very demanding on GPU but it still ran well here at around 39 FPS average in the benchmark. The final game we tested was The Witcher 3 at 720p, and it ran beautifully with 72 FPS being the average. 
seeing the game benchmarks show that this combo is still quite capable, but starting to struggle in the most demanding titles. The 4-threaded CPU, even though it's heavily overclocked and 2GB of VRAM on the GPU, may be starting to see the beginning of the end. Give it a few years and the latest games will start struggling to run even on the lowest settings at a lower resolution. But that's missing the point of this duo. It, the CPU is mid to high end from 9 years ago, and the GPU is from 7 years ago, and they've gamed super well for the past 7 years, especially looking at the competition. One day off in the future when the latest games won't run, these two will still be going strong running the lighter titles, and they'll happily be an office or web browsing machine. But until then, the frame rates are high and the prices are low. Godspeed to these two. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please leave a like and please consider subscribing. See you next time.